is a quick demonstration of the BVH import and animation tool for Moho and Anime Studio. So what we are going to do is run a script that handles the importation and the animation of the BVH data. This script was created by me. There is a component of the script that imports the data which is based on work by Dane Noosman. The remainder of the script manages the creation of 2D and 3D bones and also the animation and movement, rotations and translations of those bones into something that Moho understands. Here we see a BVH animation in the excellent BVH management tool, BVH Hacker. So here we are going to start the import process and select um, the BVH file to import. This can either be done from scripts, tools, BVH bones menu, or from the tool panel where you can select the little man with the bone to start the import process. One advantage of running the script import from the tools panel is that you can also create a keyboard shortcut for the tool action. So here I will quickly walk through the um, options that are presented when you start the script import. First we have the file name of the BVH file which you can either type or click the browse button to select a document. You'll also see we have a um, recently used list for the last couple of files that you've used previously. Below that we have the maximum frame number and that is to stop or limit the, the amount of frames that get loaded as part of the BVH import. So if you're quickly running through a bunch of files you might want to just set this to 10 or to 5 just to get a quick idea of what the animation is like. Please also note that some of the BVH files have 120 frames per second so you may want to use maybe something like 120 in those cases to actually get some idea of what the animation is going to do. If you leave this at zero then it is unlimited and will load all the frames in the BVH document. After that we have the keyframes per second and this is an attempt to reduce the number of keyframes that get created for each import by default unfortunately. Um, it creates one keyframe per frame in multiple um, animation channels and that can lead to thousands upon thousands of keyframes. Next you can select the bone color and this is for the 3D bones and this is the draw color that will be used um, to draw the skeleton. Then you can set um, the frame count down here to match um, that of the BVH import. Um, secondly you can hide zero length bones by default in Moho 12 zero length bones will be represented by a circle sometimes that looks a bit odd on the 2D bones and lastly you can ignore fingers um, this is a beta feature um, where we attempt to ignore the fingers on the hands because this can create unnecessary amounts of animation data that does not really contribute to the overall animation. So here we are going to load the first BVH file. Uh, that file is 08 underscore 10 BVH, which is one of the shared um, collection of BVH files. And here we see the drawing of the 3D and 2D bones. The 2D bones are represented by the blue outline and the 3D bones, the purple um, shapes in this instance. 
So here we just have the two D bones. And here we have both sets of bones. And here we have just the three D bones. So at the bottom, you can see that it has set 276 frames, which is the number of frames that was in the BVH document. It has also set the frame rate of the document to 120 frames per second. Um, so that gives us a total of just over two and a bit seconds. Firstly, we can see that um, there are a heck of a lot of keyframes that have been created, as I said before. Um, one for each frame, and that's on the bone layer. And then you've got lots and lots of other layers inside layers, each which have their own keyframe set, um, which creates thousands upon thousands of keyframes, and we're working to reduce that number of keyframes. If we continue to look at the um, folder structure on, or the group structure on the right, um, we can see that this 3D bones is the representation for the 3D elements. And within um, that primary group, within that primary group, um, there is a number of X layers, or which we call transformation layers. And these are responsible for the rotations of the bones and the rotations of the child layers, which then also have their own independent rotation settings. Um, and that's 3D rotations in this case. Within each transformation layer, you have a draw layer represented by the D. Um, and that is where the actual graphic is represented. So in this case, it's a hip bone, which is represented in this case um, by this vector object. All, um, all of the bones drawn in 3D are actually just extruded vectors. They're just normal um, Moho objects. You can select them, you can change their color. So we can also show that um, each of the bone layers is relative to its parent. So in this case, we can come in and change the angle of the parent node. And that affects the angle of the child or children um below it we can also see that when we look at this from um an angle we can see that that the 3D object has a degree of thickness and that thickness is created by extruding the layer and in this case we've removed the silhouette materials and creases and used a shading type of smooth The 3D bones and the 2D bones are independent once they have loaded. So you can delete the 3D bones and still have the 2D bones present. Or conversely, you can delete the 2D bones 
and have the 3D bones. If we again look at this um, animation from the side, we can see that whilst the 2D bones and the 3D bones match during the T pose, as soon as you um, put a bit of perspective on the view um, and play the animation, you'll see that the 2D bones no longer represent the body um, or the skeleton. What it actually does during the normal camera view is approximate the position or represent the position of the 3D bones in um, but in reality it is only 2D and it has no movement in the Z plane or no movement in the Z direction Again, if I switch off or hide the 3D layer, you'll see that the 2D bones don't appear to do a lot. But again, if we go back to the front facing camera view, So what we are going to do here is quickly look at one of my test files and that is a leg rotation, what I call leg 360. And here we are going to look at the representation of the 2D bones versus the 3D movement. Um, so with normal angular rotation it works fine. And then when you're rotating into the Z, that's around the X, um, the 2D bones are actually getting shorter and longer. But to the, the eye, it looks like it's rotating round. And then we get into the rotation around the Y. And in this case, the 2D bone can't actually rotate in the Y. And so it stays fixed. Although the foot at the bottom will appear to rotate. And once again, that's just the actual shortening and lengthening scaling of that bone and changing its angle to represent where the 3D bone would be at that time. So now I will leave you with some example BVH files that I have imported.